welcome to another edition of Kogain Focus, the program that beams to search light and activities around the three central zones of Kogi, Nigeria's confluent state. I'm Oluwato Sin Usuji. In today's edition, Governor Yaya Bello signs youth, sports bill and six others into law. Nigeria Judicial Council wades into resolve executive judiciary face-off over salary payments about data capturing system. Onu Edoka for continuation as Chairman Kogi Chapter of NLC. These and much more when we return. Don't go away. Welcome back. Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello has signed eight bills into law. Six of the new laws bother on increasing the revenue generation of the state. The Speaker of the House described the signing of the bills as a demonstration of Governor Bello's determination and political will to improve the lives of the people and the economy of the state. All these bills has direct impact in the life uh, and in the life of our people to improve our youth, to improve sports, mineral resources, improve us in the areas of health. At the end of the day, the IGR of the state will be increased. And that is the goal of this administration. Governor Yaya Bailu acknowledged the efforts of the legislative and judicial arms of government's impute in making the laws a reality. While some centers on one of the critical sectors of the demography in our dear state, which has to do with youths and the critical sector sports development. We are relatively young, and uh, God has made us to be leaders of today. And any government must think of tomorrow, of our children and children yet unborn. At the same time, let me state clearly here that in Koki State, especially those of us that are saddled with the responsibility of Steering the ship. Today we're concerned about our states. Though politics is at the corner, and there are a lot of noise and misinformation are out there. But what I am concerned about is to continue to do the work while the whalers continue to whale. The people and the citizens of Kogi State and the residents of Kogi State and our well wishers out wishers out there understand exactly the enormity of this job and our best that we've been putting forward to ensure that we move Kogi State to the next level. I want to thank all of you and to the media, those that has been very fair enough to uh, the states. We've seen the challenges that we met on ground and where we've taken it to and where we're going to take it to by the special grace of God. We seek your cooperation and understanding and please be very professional in your reportage. We will continue to partner with you in the development of this our dear states. The state's auditor, General Yakubu Okala, and the chief of staff to the governor, Edward Onoja, said it can only get better for the state and its people. One of the bills that have just been signed into law is the public audit law of the state, which has granted full autonomy to the office of the auditor general for it to be able to review online real time whatever that ministries, departments and agencies of governments are doing in order for the people of the state to enjoy the dividend of democracy. As a youthful governor, um, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is given that he needs to pass and emanate laws and help pass those laws into practice to, to cater for that long overdue neglected sector of the society, that's the youth um, community. And with these bills today, I think the focus on youth development, youth participation in governance, youth engagement, creating enter entrepreneurs from the, from the youth community will go a long way into um, um, helping His Excellency meet his vision and goal for the Kogi youth, which is ensuring that they are move from vice-prone activities to value-adding activities um, like farming, tourism, 
mining and the likes of it. The new laws are Kogi Utility Infrastructure Management and Compliance Agency, Kogi Youth Development Commission, Kogi Health Insurance Agency, Mineral Resources Development Agency, and Public Audits. Others are the Reappeal and Reenact the Kogi Primary Health Care Development Agency Enterprise Development Agency and Kogi Development Trust Fund and other matters connected with connected there with this brings the total number of bills passed to law in the state by the present administration to 40. The National Judicial Council, NJC, has held a closed-door meeting with Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello over the existing disputes between the executive and judiciary in the state, which prevented judiciary staff from being paid salaries for five months. The delegation of the NJC, headed by the former president of the Courts of Appeal, Justice Omaru Abdullahi, made their separate cases after which the NJC delegation recommended that everyone should seize their swords and jointly conduct the table payment and biometric capture system to allow the judiciary staff receive their salaries, which has been hanging since the face off began. The government said the whole exercise is to have an authentic, long-lasting staff database, which will prevent the existence of ghost workers speaking to journalists after the meeting the direct, Director General, Media and Publicity, Kingsley Fanwo, said recent developments suggest the judiciary has agreed. Its workers speaking to journalists after the meeting, the Director General, Media and Publicity, Kingsley Fanwo, said recent developments suggest the judiciary has agreed its workers be part of the pay parade and data capture of state civil servants. It was a very fantastic and uh, fascinating uh, Pali between the NJC members, the governor, and the also members of the legislature. Uh, they told the chief judge uh, in clear terms that uh, the issue of um, uh, biometric is something that is national, that they are even doing it in, in their own states. Fan War said since the system operates successfully in other states, there is no reason why Kogi should be different submit themselves for the pay parade and table payment that it is the universal uh, thing now in the country uh, that has been that has been resolved and we hope they will call off their strike to immediately and return to work so that the dispensation and administration of um, uh, of um, justice will go on unimpeded he said once the issue is resolved all judiciary staff will receive their five month arrears at once Kogi State Council of the Nigerian Labour Congress has returned its current executive members for another four-year term. The members were re-elected and sworn in at the council's seventh quadrennial state delegates congress in Lokoja, the state capital. The chairman of the electoral committee, Ibrahim Abubakar, said it was the unanimous decision of the council members to retain the existing leadership. The workforce of the state with our situations on the ground, we don't have to allow these elections to be tension high. And all collectively, we accepted that those who are there should be returned because they already they know the terrain. It's better than a new person coming to lend the system. NLC National Pres Representative present at the Congress told the elected members to remain focused on ensuring a better deal for workers especially as it concerns the recently signed 30,000 Naira minimum wage. Basically, the implementation of the minimum wage now moves down to states because first, the states will work on their own tables. But the most important thing is that every table has the baseline of 30,000 be selfless and determined to defend the interests of the workers because that's the trust that has been given unto them to defend the weak and indefensible worker and even our working allies. Re-elected chairman Onu Edoka and other 
elected executives promised to deliver on their mandate with a renewed push for a better deal for the state's workers. Making sure that these workers are better off than what it used to be. And the expectation from our own side as labor leaders is that we will continue to stand for them, we will continue to protect their interests and welfare, and we will continue to always be in between the gap between them and government appropriately by not betraying them or compromising at all their interests. The labor movement in Kogi State, we don't have many women. Some will be complaining about their husbands, but it's not all of us are married. Everything is based on understanding and the way you take yourself in the union. So we will be having more of workshops, seminars, organized programs for women in the labor uh, unions in the state. Government representative Edward Onoja reacted to the issue of outstanding salaries and minimum wage and assured the state's workers of government's commitment to their welfare. We have to be optimistic and the optimism is the outstanding balance of our bailout of 30 billion is almost here. Once it comes, labor and government will sit, advise ourselves on the best way to utilizing it for our people to be able to deal with those areas. So there's a positive news out there, there's hope. Very soon that will become history. Just recently signed, the approach would be each state will set up committees to fashion out the best modality, timings, and the ways to go in about executing it. But one thing is given, it's already law, and we will not want to break the law as a state. Hundreds of members of the Kogi State NLC, union delegates, and representatives of civil societies were present at the Congress. If you are just joining us, this is Kogi in Focus, the program that keeps you up to speed on developments and happenings in and, in and around Kogi State. For your contributions, feedback, comments, sponsorship and address placements, please reach us through our phone numbers, social media handles and websites displayed on your screen. Wife of the Kogi State's governor, Rashida Bailu, visited the first recorded birth of set of five at the Federal Medical Center, Lokoja. Rashida Bailu promised support for the children and their parents as she promised to relocate them to a healthy atmosphere. Blessings from God and blessing to the entire state. And the expectation should be that we take over or we take responsibility of these babies from now to by God's grace, they grow up. She also extended her benevolence to mothers and children she met in the ward when she visited the five children. The parents of the five babies were full of joy as provisions, materials and cash were donated to them. We need help from individual governments and uh, everybody uh, help me anyhow people can help us they, should, they help us what's your advice to uh, women like you out there looking for the folk on the room after so many years I ask for them the grace of God to protect them so that they should have patience as patience is the most important thing. When they have patience and trust God, that God will do it for them in Jesus' name. The chief medical director and nurse in charge of delivery said though the hospital has not handled such a multiple delivery, the medical team put in its best, adding that unfortunately one of the five babies died from an infection. Delivery. Uh, the five babies were evaluated in the special care baby unit. Four of them were found to be fit and okay. So those are the four that you see with the mother. The other one was not very stable. There are parameters we use to monitor um, a newborn to rule out chance of them developing infections because you know their immune system is not very strong. Uh, and then that one in the incubator was found to have an elevated um, PCR, which suggests that there might be risk for infections. And so the baby was kept in incubator, isolated, 
and then of course place on antibiotics. And then, um, well, the condition of the baby um, deteriorated. And then of course we lost the baby. And then the baby's weight range between 1.3 and 1.9. So they are still um, low birth weight, so to say. So we we'll watch them and make sure that they are fit before they are discharged. And like we were discussing before you came in, we're also looking at the possibility of them relocating because um, where they stay at Obajano is a place where there is a lot of dust and tiny baby like that uh, breathing in such dust may hamper their respiratory system which we think may not be too good for them at this moment uh, so we've suggested to the wife of the governor yesterday if it was possible for them to assist in relocating that to at least a place where we think is fairly safe it's the woman was actually assisted and uh, it was not a spontaneous conception. So that is why, that is the reason for the number of uh, babies. For the procedure to be successful, it is still, we will say that it is God that has helped. Because some people, they go for that and the procedure will fail. Even up to, as I'm talking to you, that is, I still feel very happy about this, the uh, situation. And it's a wonderful experience for me. Uh, I think the highest I have delivered was triplets. Three. That was the highest I have delivered. And even this one, we didn't know that there were five. It, at, before delivery, I thought they were four. Throughout the antenatal period, the woman actually came to book at eight weeks. And the ultrasound, ultrasound scan did then show that there were four embryos there. <clears throat> they said the fifth one, they saw a gestational sac without anything inside it. We call that one blighted over. So, all the subsequent ultrasound scan done have been shown for four fetuses. Of the delivery, when we now saw that they were fine. The chairman of the Abuja chapter of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, MIC Master, has described the Iberia film and entertainment industry. Ibi Wood has having the potential to rise to Nollywood if the key actors unite to promote the industry. Mike Master gave the advice at the seventh edition of the Verity comedy show organized by UM Entertainment in Okene, where some personalities were given awards for their contribution to the indigenous entertainment industry. People from near and far converged on Okene to witness the seventh edition of Verete Comedy Show, packaged with fun and dance performed by various local and nationally acclaimed artists. <laughs> Government officials and other present described the event and other recent developments as an indication of better days ahead for Kogi Central and the state as a whole. We are going to look into their, their, their challenges and we are going to do our best to see that entertainment in Kogi Central will move it to the next level. They impart so many things, support them in so many ways. So at least the government has done a lot, 100% to support the group. We have recorded a lot of setback because people don't appreciate what we have. And what they are doing today is to promote our culture that is dying. And I am happy it is happening. There was a call for collaboration, love and unity among Iberian entertainers. Thank God today we were able to bring them together to make them realize that you people in the entertainment industry, you are making the entertainment very big. Now let everybody know his position. But not many people know the value. So I am encouraging the Ibira people to put interest, to have interest for these people, this younger one that are making our name proud. Entertainment um, industry, let everybody believe in themselves. You know, don't look down on yourself. Some of us, they will be thinking that if you come to this entertainment today, tomorrow you must, you must, you must have uh, something. It's not like that. You must work tirelessly. <laughs> the entertainment, what I see in entertainment 
if you are into this entertainment, you need patience. If you don't have patience, you run out of it. Chairman Actors Guild of Nigeria and other Nollywood stars present also commented. When you're talking about the Bureau of Filmmakers, I think they should learn more to come together. That's the problem. They should think outside the box. It shouldn't be me, it should be us. Better now than the many years back. We are evolving, we are, we are producing good movies and uh, good shows. It's better now. English came to Nigeria. We have to invest on what we have. Our mother's strong. It's very, very important to us. Awards were given to some persons of Ibera origin for the roles played in promoting and projecting the people of Kogi Central positively. Award beneficiaries expressed the significance of the honor and what it means to them. For them to think I'm worthy of this award at this point in time, I'm grateful to God and I'm grateful to them. I appreciate the UM Entertainment that has uh, considered us and considered me a boy worthy of this award today. I appreciate it. For you to be appreciated in your hometown, in your fatherland, is a great thing. And to only spur me to do more of what I know how to do best, projecting the Ibira land positively to the people of the world. I thank God and I pray for them by special grace of God. By next year, they have more than this, inshallah. They should keep it up. They are really, really trying. I, I foresee the future to be a greater future that will employ because after oil, tourism, this is part of tourism, is the next revenue earner for the nation. The convener, Aliu Sadiq Omeza, thanked Governor Yahya Belu for creating the environment that has allowed the entertainment industry to strive. I thank God that there is no any division in Ibra Entertainment again because this, the present government has came in and settled all of us. We are together now, we are one. The event was spiced up with music, dance and comedy from budding and established artists including Willie the Drunk, Blessing Wankwa and Mike Master. Governor Yaya Bailey has expressed shock over the passing of the chief imam of Iberia land, Alhaji Musa Galadima. The governor, however, extolled Alhaji Galadima, describing him as a humble, gentle, and serious Islamic teacher whose, whose tutelage extended beyond Nigeria. He called on Islamic clerics to emulate the life led by the deceased. The tribute was contained in a statement made available to newsmen in Lokoja. Governor Bello said the death of the chief imam was a devastating loss to him personally, adding that the depth of the loss would be felt beyond the shores of Nigeria. The governor prayed to Allah to forgive him all his shortcomings and made Aljanat Al Fidarus his final resting place. Chief Imam Galadima died on 19th April at the age of 123 and has been buried according to Muslim rights. Kogi State's government has described the death of Abdurazak Idris, alias Mataz, as a huge loss among the youth in the state, especially Kogi Central. Mataz, as he was popularly known, was an artist adorned of his young age of the state government friends and family members described him as a peacemaker whose vacuum was difficult to fill. It's a couple of years ago when uh, we met at one of their locations. And since then, you know, he's very accommodating, he's very nice, um, he's very, very understanding. And we've been in talking time since then and we've shared so many ideas and I was so shocked when I heard of his death uh, last week and I can't but help coming down to the stage to show my last respect. Uh, my prayer to him is um, may God grant him our jana. Yeah, and may he rest to uh, that he will meet again anyway. Then the legacy he keeps that I would like to follow is 
to reach out to people. As in, recently we awarded him as the voice of the streets because he has those years of listening to your complaint. So if there's any way he can help, we try to help. So I'm trying to follow that also. Mataya is a big brother. I always call him blood brother because he's good for me. And, and also, at times, because I be, I'm an artist, you know, he always is somebody that we always gather us together to unite as one in, in Kogi State, not even in Central alone. And the loss of Mataya is so painful to me. And it's too hot, and I'm not happy because now, like you can see, that my eye is blood. Well, I you know it's too bad, man. Isaac Mataya was a legend, a living legend. Isaac Mataya was a hero. Isaac Mataya was a peacemaker. So I never knew that a good people will not last. But we pray that God may put a mind to such thing to an entertainment because he is a mobilizer to us. We miss him. He's a good uh, artist and... Um, I'm not a few doubts. He's all I pray for, pray for every day, so I know God will grant it because he has really been good to me. Members of the entertainment industry described his death as a big blow. Why uh, do you Mataz? If you're very close to him, like, he's very friendly. Mataz is very, very friendly. So we don't know show. We don't show the door. So we don't know. I hear I'm in the town hall. Look, I die. My director, I hear I say what him. I say go hear him. I was there. Is he? I can't hear him. I can't hear him. My name is Mr. Laji Machayema. Well, I've been on the radio right for over seven years in entertainment. Years, or the one thousand. You know, not just pretend on the counter. Them kukwa him. I hear Colonel on the scene and never. The Laji Machayema on the air. I am the baby. Entertainment. Entertainment. It's only brought a brother around me. And you are Mizu Kain and Abrika. Impact on only in entertainment that I owe it. About Muli, I was also on the tenant. Ah, can you have an issue? I call it a good book. So, Aurora or not, but she or not made every ever upon any of the end. Mudas Munga, or not any elements may I can't be the Director General Government House Administration, Shwai Buaricha, said Mata's death came as a shock to him. He prayed to God to give the family fortitude to bear the loss. <laughs> Whatever no I I gave that person to our show whole night now because we will hear Ever of Kahoo Kalu TV or no now. Wako Nakalu TV, Corona, our Corona, or any money. But politics, I never can make it. Ever politics, ever of our shoes. Abdurazak died of a brief illness at the hospital on the 6th of April. He was since buried follow the following day at his hometown, Agasa, according to Islamic rites. This is where I wrap it up on today's edition of Cocaine Focus. Join me for another interesting package on this same station, same time next week. And as usual, keep doing to others what you want them to do to you. I'm Aluwa Tosin Suji. Bye for now. <laughs>